I'm going to call to order the 2,460th meeting of the Darien Police Commission. Uh, second order of business acceptance of minutes of July 27th. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions, comments, changes? Hearing none, um, all those in favor? <coughs> Uh, okay, correspondence, Chief? A few items of correspondence. I did get a CC email from a Darien resident who was stopped for a minor motor vehicle violation on Hecker Avenue near the police department. Uh, as always, we try to <coughs> even handed enforcement effort. This was kind of a roll through stop sign, almost stop, not quite full stop, but the resident did take the time to write in and commend Officer Flood for his professionalism and uh, I just thought overall he was treated fairly and he was appreciative of the efforts. So I'm not sure we usually get a thank you note from people that get pulled over. No, no. That can't be very often. So. That's a good job by Officer Flood. Uh, as in the past, we got a note from the West Shore Indians that they are keeping us in their thoughts and prayers, so that comes every few months, so appreciate the Canadians for keeping the men and women in blue in their thoughts and prayers. Uh, I have a guardian tracking uh, entry. You know, guardian tracking is our internal um, kind of organ here where we have commendations of officers. So one is for Michelle Yolanda. Uh, Michelle is our evidence of property clerk. This is one of those things that it's the unsung heroes of the department. A lot of stuff you don't see in the background that makes us run properly. Uh, she's just, you know, she keeps her finger on the pulse of all paperwork and makes sure everything gets down to court and everything. Um, so Sergeant Chris Jimenez put an entry in there for her. That they, we served a warrant on someone down at the courthouse. Um, Michelle did a good job, got all the paperwork done and got it down there. So he said, that I think that quite often the work that she does behind the scenes goes unnoticed, but I'd like to recognize Michelle. Both Captain Adem and I responded that we do uh, see on a regular basis that she's keeping everything in order, so I appreciate her records. Um, we had another guardian tracking communication for Co uh, officers Costantini and Lasser. We went to an aided call where there was significant bleeding due to a medical issue and they put tourniquet on the person and probably saved their life, so good job from them as well. Uh, that was from, again, Sergeant Chris Menez. Without a doubt, these officers saved the patient's life through their quick and safe response and their medical interventions. So the folks who maybe watch on TV that don't know or watching for the first time, all our officers are first responders for medical calls. That is allow, that's how Post 53 kind of operates with us as their first responders. So, as long as I've been here, we've been responding to all medical calls and the officers do a good job. And lastly, we got a, an email resident from, uh, email from a resident uh, commending Detective Benedetto and Officer Buzakis. Um, this is a case where a credit card was stolen from Stop and Shop, and the detective and uh, the officer did a fine job with our elderly resident who wanted to write in and let him know proper service. And uh, I'm gonna read the last part of it. I've been astonished by the entire experience of interacting with Officer Buzakis and Detective Benedetto, both operating on a level way behind, beyond anything I expected. These men took up the cause of an 85-year-old Darianite, demonstrating there are still good, decent, and dedicated people around us. They are exemplars of all things good in protecting and serving our citizens. I couldn't say it any better myself, so I appreciate the resident taking the time to write that. Nice job by everybody involved this time around. Indeed. Um, okay, Captain, Department Activity? Yes. Uh, we haven't met in about a month, so unfortunately there's a couple of entries here. Uh, July 27th, an Allen O'Neill resident reported that upon returning from a recent vacation that $10,000 in cash was missing from the residence. On July 31st, a small electrical fire caused minor damage at Cherry Long Park bathroom house. The 
causes it believed to be from the extreme outside temperatures. On August 5th, Greaves Pharmacy was broken into during the early morning hours of prescription narcotics and $600 cash was stolen. Officers were dispatched to this incident after a delayed burglar alarm signal was received. On August 21st, during the early morning hours, Greaves Pharmacy again was burglarized. However, the alarm was reported to this agency without delay. In this incident, it's believed that the suspects did not take anything. <clears throat> On August 8th, an 18-year-old Darian man was arrested for breach of peace after he was observed naked in a tree and also running throughout the Darien High School property. The suspect later explained that it was a challenge that he and his friends were participating in. August 11th, an elderly Stanford resident fell victim to a distraction theft while in the Whole Foods parking lot. While the female was loading groceries into her car, she was distracted by the first suspect as the second suspect entered her vehicle and stole her wallet. On August 14th, after a lengthy investigation, Detective Greg Benedetto arrested a 40-year-old Bridgeport man by warrant for a car purchase scam in which he stole $50,000 from a Darien resident in April of this year. The suspect remains in custody on a $100,000 bond. On August 14th, the 40-year-old Darien man was arrested for disorderly conduct and harassment second for sending numerous threatening online messages to another Darien resident in July of this year. August 15th, a Hollow Tree Ridge Road resident fell victim to a social media scam in which over $2,500 was lost. On August 17th, an unknown individual attempted to break into the Darien train station during the evening hours but did not gain entry. On August 15th, a Cliff Avenue resident realized that personal belongings and cash were stolen while his property was being moved into his residence. On August 20th, two suspects shoplifted approximately $200 worth of Tide detergent and paper towels from CVS Pharmacy. On August 22nd, a suspect shoplifted over $150 worth of razors from CVS also. We had four <clears throat> domestic disturbance incidents in which two involved arrests, four incidents of check fraud or mail theft, four, DD, four DWI arrests, one of which involved a single car accident. We had five st stolen vehicles unlocked with the keys in it. One was taken from inside a garage, two were taken from a train station, Two were taken from driveways. Two of these cars were used in a two-day crime spree that involved armed robberies, pursuits, arson, and injured police officers and numerous damaged police cars. Uh, nine overnight burglaries of unlocked cars. Two were inside of a garage. Three attempted burglaries of vehicles, but the vehicles were locked. We had 25 motor vehicle accidents with six involving minor injuries. 313 traffic stops conducted by the Traffic Division and the Patrol Division. In the next couple of weeks, our patrol staff will be going through patrol rifle recertification. And then lastly, the Chief and I just got back from uh, the FBI NAA conference in Denver. Any comments? I have some comments. I bet you do. Uh, we met with Hearst Media today. They wanted to come in and talk to us about stolen cars and car burglaries to do a follow-up on a story that the reporter did last year. I did ask from Hearst Media, who they do a pretty good job of doing long-form, multiple uh, episodes of investigation. And I told them that it might behoove them to look into the case where our two stolen cars that were taken during broad daylight, one from a driveway, one from a garage that was open with the keys in it, as the captain mentioned, it was then used in a two or three day spree across the state, armed robberies and other serious bellwether crimes. Pursuit happens in Meriden, multiple police cars get smashed up, our residence car that was stolen gets smashed up and they arrest four or five people within stolen cars, some of which are juveniles. So I asked them would they consider doing a follow-up story and watching this case for these arrests and referrals of the juveniles as they go through the court system so we think they, they can report what happens when somebody gets arrested for this type of activity. I just don't think the public sees what happens either in action or proper action in the court system that I, I think it's, it behooves us to shed some light on what happens after the fact. Our officers and our detectives are doing yeoman's work out there. We're making arrests all the time of stolen cars after the fact. It is very dangerous that we have this continuing to occur, that the violent criminal activity has not yet really occurred here in Darien as a result of our stolen cars, but our stolen cars from Darien are being used in violent crimes across the state on a regular basis, and it's troubling to all of us. 
where this would probably not be happening if the cars were simply locked. And meaning, I guess, our residents do not confront somebody if they are stealing your vehicle because most likely or potentially they are armed. And they can right? be armed. In, in this case, we've had cases recently where, yes, people are getting arrested in our stolen cars that are armed with firearms and using firearms in our problem situation. And I think it also makes sense to maybe write to, you know, your letter, you know, your representatives up in Hartford because up until recently there's been a lack of legislation to actually, you know, I would say uh, penalize people for stealing vehicles up until very recently. Law enforcement and judicial review of criminal activity is always on a pendulum. It never stays still. It's always rocking back and forth between different sides. It's come a little too far. As far as I'm concerned, over here now, where there doesn't seem to be repercussions or ramifications that are you know, thought of by people that are committing criminal activity. Clearly, I think it needs to swing back. I don't tend to have all the answers, but I know what is happening as of late and is troubling for professional law enforcement across the state. So we need people to lock their cars. I should just have a sign that I hold up. At you we should put it on, you know, put it on the board, you know, for every commission meeting to remind everybody we need them to lock the cars. Uh, is there something else I think? Public comment, and we do have public here today. Um, I don't know who wants to speak, but it's on Five Mile River Road signage. So, great. Introduce great. yourself, and um, the floor is yours. Thank you. I'm Michael Catano, number 120, Five Mile River Road. I'm Molly Catano, 120, Five Mile River Road. And I'm Jillian Nelson, 124, Five Mile River Road. So, um, at the request um, of Captain Hudma uh, and Rick as well. We put together a petition, uh, which I think was the appropriate uh, course, and um, specifically it states, we, the undersigned, support a formal enforceable update to signage at the turnaround circle, uh, Five Mile River Road, that would stipulate something to the effect of um, no standing, loitering, or parking at any time. Um, the purpose of this area is to enable the Board of Education school buses and execute three-point turns for daily pickup and drop off and facilitate vehicle turnarounds before entering a private road. However, increasingly this area has been used by construction trucks, taxis, and non-residents throughout the days and evenings. This has become a safety issue in a residential neighborhood. Um, we hereby request an immediate update to the dated signage currently in place and the continuation of regular supervision by the um, Police Department and, and Traffic Control Division. Con sincerely concerned residents. So I have um, a petition. Um, and uh, still photos. Uh, we have videos if you'd like to see them. Um, I'll leave them here for the side. Uh, but then just some comments um, uh, you know, from us. Uh, there are many that obviously feel the same way that we do. Um, summarizing the best as I can, this has been long in the making and has really gotten out of hand at this stage. It's a safety issue for nearby residents and their children needs to be addressed. Um, we think by the police who has the ability to make and enforce real change as per what the town ordinance suggests. Um, we don't want to stand by it idly and let the safety of children and local residents be jeopardized because of out-of-date signage. Um, most importantly, if there were to be an emergency and a fire truck, ambulance, police cruiser needed to get in and out, they could be put in a position where they can't find the drivers who left their vehicles behind and this can't be the responsibility of local residents. We happen to live uh, all right there. Others obviously feel the same way. The area is not designated as a park. It's not considered off-street municipal parking. It's a residential neighborhood. And the circle's been there for, uh, we think, upwards of 50 years. Um, and uh, has been there for express purpose of, of turning around, but not for parking. I think that anybody else in town would have a similar concern if cars were parked in mass in front of their house day and night. It shouldn't be acceptable, we, we don't think, in this in this area. What does the signage read now? The signage currently reads, and uh, I don't think I'm paraphrasing, no, no parking from 7 to 9 and from 1 to 3 or 1 to 3 to so 3. Monday 30. through Friday. Presumably for the buses. It was yeah. for the bus, okay. yeah. We originally done that, all right. Okay, so it's um, no parking, but with a the, time the designation. Could just, I'll, I'll no, just let yeah, no you know. Um, too, yeah. Is there no loiter in sign there? No. So back in, I think it was like 2004, 2005, um, the school bus stopped coming down our street. 
and I investigated why, and it turns out the bus couldn't safely turn around because of this issue, these cars. So we didn't have the bus for a year. Um, at that time, I spoke with Kathleen Perez uh, for many months. Um, I had three children in the school system, um, and she said I had to get um, permission from the people on the private part of the road to allow the bus to back up the narrow private section. Because what would happen is when cars and trucks are parked there, they would actually, the bus would back down the Catano's driveway. And they didn't live there at that time. The Wikers did, and Penny Wiker called and complained and said, I, you know, buses and trucks should not be coming down my driveway, using my driveway. So they just removed the bus altogether. So they moved, the bus has enough room to turn around if there are no cars Correct. there. This was purely yes. because the cars were making it. Right. Okay. So at that time, I spoke with the powers that be, and they, we agreed that this sign would help the bus to be able to turn around. And the different times accommodates the kindergarten bus, the elementary school, middle school, high school, and private school buses that use the road as well. Um, however, over the years, um, cars are parked there, trucks are parked there. I've called the police department um, non-emergency line dozens of times to report that the bus is sitting there honking the horn for 20 minutes. And I've taken it upon myself over the years to find the owners of vehicles and trucks, get them to move so that the bus could turn around. And um, so, but now, and this is, you know, two decades, of doing this, I don't do it much anymore because my kids are in college, but um, it's really gotten out of hand over the last few years as there's the street is more populated, there are more kids on the street, and it's really, um, we just felt like we really needed to take action. And I'll tell you one little story um, that happened. Um, cars were parked there, the bus driver tried to turn around, and this was probably eight or ten years ago, he hit a car. And I went out and I saw that the bus was just sitting there. And I said, what's going on? And he was crying. The bus driver was crying and because he thought he was going to lose his job over a car that was illegally parked. And it just, I felt so bad for the guy. He's just trying to do his job. And nobody is adhering to this sign that clearly states no parking during these times. In, the, in current times now, is it neighbors? Is it mostly construction trucks? It could be anyone. It's, it could be, it, we don't even know. It could be someone from out of town that's maybe in Rowayton and sees maybe our street and sees some space and wants to, you know, drive and, and just, you know, see the neighborhood. Um, to add to your point, um, the mailman can't also deliver the mail to the private homes um, in the circle many days because well, he has to get out of his truck. He usually pulls his truck up, you know, puts the mail in all the mailboxes quickly, but he now has to get out of the car to um, put mail in the private mailboxes. Um, you know... Um, I think adding some other anecdotes, though, is, is important because I want this to be... Again, we, our view around this is this is a safety issue. And this is also not the original intent of why the circle was ever set up that way in the first place. But besides the fact that school buses can be late as much as 20 minutes both both sides of the day for pick up and drop off, we have seen fire trucks needing to being unable to turn around, having to back their way down the street. That's no good. We, as Molly mentioned, the postal workers unable to deliver their mail. Garbage pickups had to turn around and leave. We've seen large delivery trucks pulling down our driveway because they can't turn around. We've seen limousine drivers sitting waiting in the circles for hours. We've seen cars parked in the evening, smoking, drinking, sexual activity, changing clothes. It, it's it's true. They're taking um, it, this, photographs. This of is just a, this is just over a long period of time. And and to Rick's point, and we spoke about this as well. You know, we we call selectively. You know, whenever it's a safety issue, and, and we're very very clear. I, we know that, and we both, and we reached out as well infrequently when that's really been the case but you don't want to receive all these phone calls all the time but you know people taking pictures of, of the houses we've had our children had awkward encounters with people sitting in cars um, again this and is there, not there last week but this is cars, over time sorry there can also be cars that will sit there for multiple hours just sitting in their car maybe on their phone we don't know who they are and I don't 
want to go out and have an exchange with them. Um, I'm sure you've noticed that I as have, well. I have confronted people um, who were doing things that were just unsavory, like a gentleman who was coming for months and he would be in work clothes like a suit and he would literally change his clothes in, in his car and outside of his car to go for his run or to exercise. And I just, so I just said, I, you know, this isn't a park, you know, you, you're welcome to use the parks in town, there are several to, for your exercise purposes, but if this is a, a, a neighborhood and there are children and you shouldn't be taking your clothes off, you know, in broad daylight it just, but these are the things, you know, it's... And you said you have a petition, have, have the neighbors signed it, or you yeah. it? So you've already canvassed. Yeah, and this is, this is universal, and as I mentioned, I think, okay. uh, to Captain Hudmore and another mayor I mentioned to you, Rick, that, you know, the list probably could have been hundreds deep, but we really wanted people who actually agreed with this conceptually speaking, but we had people who live close and who experience it day to day. Um, I, th I think the point is. I think the point is pretty clear overall. I mean, you're hearing yeah. what we're focused yeah, on. We, we think that the we think that the way to address this uh, is to change the signage and make this unequivocally a no parking, standing, loitering message that covers everything on a blanket basis. Turn around only. Turn around, whatever. May, yeah, turn around only. But any, anything that will just put a cap on any reason to be there, and that that's the. What we're asking. Well, Mr. Capano, you, you, in your letter you say this is a residential neighborhood and the circle is not a legal parking area. Is that? I, I don't know if it would be a legal parking area. I don't know. No, sorry, not to be. In your, in your email. Yes. You wrote this is a residential neighborhood and the circle is not a legal parking area. Right, okay. Is that true? Well, I'm not an attorney, so I, and I, I did go through as much as I could through what defined off-street municipal parking or or legal parking and there was no this is not included in any area right? but it's on-street parking in a residential neighborhood that is a legal yes. parking so, spot there are two types of parking uh, on street parking not just in Connecticut across the board it's either prohibited or permissive Connecticut is a permissive state you can park anywhere where parking is not prohibited and be legal, okay. right? If you're blocking the entire lane, that's a different story. But since Connecticut is a permissive state, that's the difference. A lot of a lot of uh, states, it's permitted parking, right? It has to explicitly say you can park there or you can't. Mm -hmm. Connecticut's the opposite. So. Um, is that what you're? Is that what? I guess the question was. Line of it, thinking? Well, I, I just wondered why that was why that was put in there, but it is indeed that. That sentence is not. I, I'm sure you didn't do it intentionally. Yeah, it's just not. Do, do any of your, do you, I mean, your neighbor, you mentioned your neighbors do use it. Do they use it for you know I don't know the nanny coming by during the day or the friends coming by? Did it, when you got this petition, did anybody push back with anything? Anything that we should be aware or parties of? or yeah parties. Well, that that topic has come up. I mean, obviously, and this is the thing. Like I think that if you give people an inch, they, they take a mile. But one of the most recent considerations has been a major construction project at a house up the street, which gummed up the whole thing for, I don't know, six months or so. There will be others. There are more, we know there are file applications. There will be others, other side of the street and the private road. When it comes to people, you know, people who are kind and considerate, quite frankly, will send a note saying we're going to have 10 people down. They'll be gone in two hours. And, you know, the issue is still the same, but, you know, there's some consideration. But it's, it's rare. But it's they're going to get a ticket now. You understand that, right? They should, though. Okay. I mean, the, the, the point is, the point is, is that, as we mentioned before, it's a safety issue, not just for strangers hanging out in the zone. I, but I don't disagree with you. Yeah. I'm just, like, the, you guys are all on board with this, and, and we're fine with that, but when you have a Christmas party, you have your family over, and your family parks on that circle, we can't call the police and be like, why did I get a ticket, right? Yes, yeah, I, I think thing. it has to be kind of like all or none. I don't know how so, else to. How, 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 how many people disagree? I'm sorry, Captain. Yeah. How many how many people did not sign your petition? Do you have 50 residents? Did 20 sign it? Did 50 sign it? No, there's there's eight signatures here. Eight of okay. of people who were who were local to that area. And and again, I didn't ask everybody. Yeah, we didn't ask everybody. As I mentioned, I want to see if you got pushed back. We no, did. that um, we want to represent all the residents. No, that that that's fair. No one said like, don't go and do this. This is going to go the wrong route per se. I get the issue. Yeah. 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 Um, 
So I went down there when, when I got the complaint because I wanted to see, and he's right. There were probably 14 cars parked in that, like butt, butted up to each other, right up to the mailboxes, like nobody could get around. To play devil, so I get it. Like it's, that was a mess and I was surprised. Um, but to play devil's advocate, if, and I'm just saying, I'm not on either side, I just want to throw all the info out. Right now, the signs have those two-hour blocks or whatever for the purposes of school buses. So my thought is, you know, people are using it that live up that private section, that it's a one-lane road, their driveways maybe aren't that long, and they have friends or whoever come, you know, let's just say it's not a construction crew with 14 cars, but a couple of friends, they're going to want somewhere to park. So my question is, have we thought about maybe making it no parking Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m.? I mean, it is, that part of the road is a public road. Mm -hmm. um, just like everyone, most people live on public roads. If people want to park across the street, stop and smoke a cigarette, although you're annoyed that you look out the window and you're like, who's this person? And I don't know smoking a cigarette. Is it illegal? No, right? But for the purposes of safety and school bus, if we do 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., then during the day, the bus can get around, the mail, bo the mail carrier can get there. It's not you know, an issue. If people need construction, they're going to figure out where their cars need to be besides there. But at night, when people are visiting, coming over for dinner, or you have a weekend guest right, that needs to park somewhere, then we're still allowing that. Um, I'm it's just not thinking, so much the issue, like those hours. It's the daytime right, hours that's that what I'm you're saying. So if, where if we're saying no parking during daytime hours, to get rid of that, that issue of, that of no turning around or, and or, or it's worth a try and see you know I mean none of the, we get to the, the, the signs are not um, adhered to by the people that park there like let's just say this construction that happened those cars were not removed from the seven to nine and brought back well, and yeah. removed from but that's two to four yeah and I yeah. I believe that <laughs> yeah. I mean you can see. yeah Oh yeah, it's almost not, you know, yeah. you can see them playing yeah. the, the, you know, it's almost. But if it literally was no parking mm -hmm. for a little clearer, a little longer, um, it doesn't allow you to cheat around the edge. Right. Right. So or, pictures, or it could be, we'll yeah. Well, I was just going to say, and when I was there for that, school's not in session. Mm -hmm. So, I, I get, they could, we could right. give out tickets looks, for that I mean, it's and fine. But I, right. I actually it's spoke to the construction person who said, you know, there was nowhere else. He got permission from somebody to park the car there. It's school wasn't in session. You know, it's it's tough. I I get both sides of it. No, you know? totally. And I think yeah. the owners, when I kind of keep bringing up construction because this is just the latest incident, I think the owners need to be in contact with their general contractor and tell his team. You know. Oh, yeah. Don't, you know, mess up. Well, the it, it certainly would give a little more teeth if it had either no parking yeah. or some variation that yeah. we're talking about, and you try it six to six or whatever, and then yeah. it's cut and dry. You cannot. That is not. A, mm -hmm. it, I can just see them playing the fast time, and with yeah. the times. It yeah. just gets. Um, it's not really tricky, but it allows for people to chew it, chew yeah. into yeah. it a little bit. That, it's only two hours. It's already eight thirty. Whatever. Yeah. So come, and it's easier to. Different for you. The, the, those pictures look like they were largely taken on the same day. Is it? Would you say that's uh, no, every day? Or no. Every day. Actually like that, not. Or? And that every day for the last, I would say, the month of August, maybe end of July, month of August, the circle was like that every day. And um, again, with eight signatures, I, I get the issue. Trust me. But with, with eight signatures, I mean, have you socialized this further with the neighbors where, you know, it is problematic for someone that is doing construction there? Or you know they do use it for parking for other reasons, where it would negatively impact them. Or you know. spoke to one of the to the builder and, and said. I just asked how much you socialize yeah. with the neighborhood. No, we're question. and we're oh, there's no there's no we're all there's we're no all there's no yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. we've actually I I I even think you know for the lawn guys that come and go, I almost have patience for that. They have to you know, but. Um, At the end of the reasonable. day, I, I think that were this space, which was never intended to be a parking zone, legally or not, 
um, or, or nor is it certainly off-street municipal parking, because it's not designated as such, or anywhere else in town. Uh, I think everybody would have a similar emotion towards this. It just so happens it's in, you know, right in front of, right in front of our house. So, and does that mean that we should have known that by before we even <laughs> moved in? I mean, sure, I guess, but I don't think anybody anticipated the, the way this has evolved over time, yeah. nor, the, nor the safety considerations that have deteriorated over time. So again, I don't want to belabor this whole point. I'm, I'm sure we don't. You see the issue. The signage is dated. It needs to be updated. I, I don't want to speak on behalf of all the neighbors and say that I've canvassed every single one and that they totally agree that you're right, there should be no parking, period, you'll all get ticketed, period. We don't want to spend our time having to call the police. Like, that's not, and quite frankly, when neighbors have friends over for with a couple of cars there, they come and go in three hours. It's not that big of a deal, clearly. But the, but the more flex you give to the signage, the more you up, open the chance for other things that we're trying to get, get away it. from. No, we totally get it. get it. Not to belabor the whole thing that much. Totally, longer. totally get it. Um, the pictures I, I have, by the way, are over 10 years, but if you want to see them, I'd bite down there. Okay, see so you know. <laughs> I turn around. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how, where to go as a next step. Do we want more neighbor feedback? We want to try something, see what the feedback, no, where, is there a way we can reach the neighbors even with you know a flyer or something you bring to their door, you know a survey? You know we had some other people yeah. do that. We can, for we can right? certainly they, craft a document for right, all residents of Five Mile River. That's easier yeah. than a database and, yeah, we can get from the private section that from the town from the assessor, right? And I, you know, the old gray-haired guy was the power that be that was involved in the signage at Five Mile River Road with the, with the bus. Times that was just, and I'm sure we can pull the documentation. We had residents there, including a selectman who lived there, who didn't want a total prohibition against parking just for the reasons that we discussed. Uh, we had the same exact occurrence on Crane Road where they wanted to post it for no parking except resident party parking only. <laughs> well, we can't have it, you can't have it. You right. can't say, Well, yeah, we don't want anybody going to the beach and parking mm -hmm. on Crane Road, but when we have a party, we don't want the officers to come down and ticket anybody. That puts us in a kind of rock and a hard place if some resident doesn't want to see the party happening over there. So I have no, right, if we, if we get overwhelming concurrence that the residents who live down there understand that, and I have no issue with posting it as no parking. We can't post a public road as no loitering. That, that, that doesn't comply under a statute. You can certainly say no parking, no stopping, no standing, right? Mm -hmm. But loitering, when you see a loitering sign, yep. it's never on a public roadway, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> if you see it, it would be in front of like, you know, say a building, but not on a public road. So it's a little bit problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I see your, I see the point, right? Mm -hmm. There's some shenanigans I, that take place in that turnaround. Well, there's shenanigans <laughs> that happen almost all around. over, I'm sure. And every, I'm sure. every but little cul de sac. Yeah. yeah. Just, just so I know, though, if you, since you, uh, as, I, as I read, have the express authority and the ability to mm -hmm. dictate mm -hmm. parking stipulations throughout town mm -hmm. and traffic considerations. On road, on, on street, not yeah. off street, but on um, street. This then, then if you, we send out, or not we, but if you were to send out, or someone's going to be sending out some kind of a way to canvas all the, the people, what are we exactly asking them? I, I think it would just be more for question. Do you we're looking do into you, it? Do you ever have a party where you want people to park here? And the answer is no. We don't. We don't do that. And really, the people who live at the open end of five miles, you really don't have much standing, really, right? right. They're probably not going all right. the way to the end to park in the circle, right? Right. But I would think five or six or seven or eight houses, whatever, or from Davis Lane down or from Davis. That, but all that the area. people that up and over who have no parking, I would imagine that. Um, I don't know. We'd have to craft it. We're looking into this. Thoughts, you know. Yeah. I don't know that it, there's a. Do you ever have a party? I mean, we'd have to figure out what the yeah. what the right the way. It sounds silly to you guys too, but like the chief's example of Crane Road. Hey, you know, you will get sometimes residents pushing back against it. That's yeah. That's why we ask the question. Right. Right. You have somebody here three months saying we don't want that. That's all. Right. But if okay, 
I'm, I'll, I'll be interested to hear what the response is because, you know, who doesn't want their cake and eat it too? If they could be like, sure, I want the space to be able to, so I can party and have parking down there. But I don't want to deal with the consequences besides that because it's not my problem. It's not in my front yard. Like, I that's, not, that's not a fair outcome, I don't think. I don't know. Those pictures, either. if I were anyone, I mean, I'm one person and I don't live on Five Mile River Road, but I would imagine most people who are either driving by that, even if it's, I know it's in your front yard. Yeah. But it's, it's, it looks like it's a problem that I would think most people on Five Mile River would be sensitive to because it looks terrible. Sure. And would it's a crime and it's, it's yeah. all the things that nobody wants in their neighborhood. But I think it would behoove maybe us to bring it to everyone's attention that we came here and we asked, you know, for your attention to this matter and this is a solution, a possible solution. and in such a way that it wouldn't impact their ability to use that as excess parking for if it were during you know the nine to six or Monday through Friday whatever time that you agreed to um, well yeah I, that's the message is if yeah you're looking I, you brought it to our attention we're trying to come up right. with creative solutions yeah. what actually moves the needle yeah. for the problem but also preserves whatever people might be worried about preserving or maybe no parking, no parking, you right. don't care. Yeah. That. Would that yeah, signage I mean, just change in your opinion? I know maybe we should talk about it or would, it, it, would it be any bigger or anything if people aren't adhering to the current size today? I'm just saying from the aesthetic standpoint, there was, you know, yeah. maybe more than one sign or? I'm not sure, you know, it's been, it's been quite some time, but what actually is down there? Yeah. It's very yeah. visible. What you, we, you what we put down there was certainly going to be more compliant to, make, to meet the legal standard. The one that's currently <coughs> there you're talking? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's, one, it's like this big. Yeah, it's not, it's not it's And it says no party and it has the hours. Yeah. I think there's one, there might be two. I don't think it's, there's, there's only one. one. There's one. one. Just one. My only point is people aren't listening to it today, mm -hmm. so if you change it. Yeah. Well, I would put, I would put it back in, in that area. area. Um, I think that's a good Captain idea. Captain Demi yeah. is in charge of. So um, just my thoughts. We can talk about this later about how to reach out to those yeah. um, other residents. But I would, I would, my thought is to send something out like we're looking to change the parking in this area. Are you opposed to a 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, no parking at all, or leave it as is? And kind of see where people fall, mm -hmm. and then and, come back and, and figure. And at it the out. end of the day, just so we're clear, the legal traffic authority, i.e., these three folks, if every resident came back and said, "No, no, no, we want to be able to park there," the legal traffic authority can still say, "No, we're not doing that." Right. Mm -hmm. Whether you mm -hmm. like it or not, right. Right. they make the decision. Yeah, the yeah. residents don't make the decision. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. popular, sometimes very unpopular. <laughs> yeah, sure. In my yeah. eleven years sitting sure. here, honestly, it's the combination of other people that park there and other with yeah. the neighbors you know construction workers and right. lawn people it's it's that combination that make it really yeah, out of hand yeah. so i think bringing people's attention to it where they can you know tell their people if you can please park in my driveway and then for the public who use it as for parking and what have you it will maybe alleviate that yeah. aspect as well well i think as a first step, I would think you guys would deliver the message you came. We're mm -hmm. thinking about possible outcomes. Just a heads up before a letter comes from the LTA saying we're looking at it. Um, but I think we should communicate as well just to... And, and, for, and if they have, and by the way, in that letter, I would, there's A, B, C, you know, options, and then do you have any other, I mean, mm -hmm. we're open we're to looking yeah. For yeah, solutions. anyone else's solutions. Mm -hmm. Full disclosure, I'm very heartened that parking on Five Mile River Road is the hot topic <laughs> today, right? It doesn't show you that yeah. in the grand scheme of things, when this oh. is our hot topic, we're doing pretty well. well that's, that's, not not lost. That's, that's, that's not lost on us. Yeah. 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 It's very important. I went to a board select meeting once, and the two contentious topics were on street parking on Old Kings Highway South, back down Corbin Drive, and how to set up the moorings in, in, in <laughs> Darien Harbor. You know, lead over to the select menu. This is our biggest problem. We're doing okay. pretty well here. Yeah, yeah I'll sure. say. <laughs> sure, great. What would uh, you like to be left with here, if anything? The original petition, or you have the fix? Yeah, you might as well. Yeah, leave. you might as well yeah, leave. Of course. Um, yeah. And great. Captain is your contact, mm -hmm. and um, we will continue to come up with. Thank you. 
some kind of. We can get I, I'm well. sure. Okay. Thank you for Thank listening. You for we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Figure listen, out. if there's a suspicious activity yeah. on your street, yeah. don't hesitate to call us. That's oh, I need to be called for. I okay? called so, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I do have one question. Like, it, even the sign today, as it stands, how is it enforced? Like, if if we call and when we call and say there are cars parked illegally, they've never been ticketed. So going forward, what, how would it be enforced to really prevent people from parking there? If, if you call the police department to report illegal parking, mm -hmm. it needs to be addressed by the officer, one mm -hmm. way or the other. Mm -hmm. The cars either have to be moved, and they get the benefit of the doubt to move the cars, mm -hmm. or the cars get ticketed. The fact that nothing is done, that, that's not our SOP for doing business. If someone calls on a legitimate complaint, it will be addressed by mm -hmm. the officer. And if any resident finds that they call the police and it's not, or they don't think it's properly addressed by the officer, you know where to find us and we take care of that at that point, either one of the two captains, mm -hmm. whatever division it happens to be. But I think we're fairly responsive to all types of complaints. Oh, somebody's absolutely. I was just a, asking. a parking you. issue and the officer can have one or two options. It's his if they discretion. Can't, if they can't find out where the thing in these is and no parking zone, the ticket should be put on the car. There is mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm going to pass that down to you, Kat. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Right. We'll leave here. Um, old business building issue update. Well, I'm going to punt this one to Captain Hedema <laughs> for the bad, a little bit of bad news on this one. Lovely. Well, good news is the women's locker room is going out to bed. That's happening August 28th. Um, so that's moving forward. The bad news, uh, we had mentioned it, I think it was two meetings ago, or maybe last meeting now, the fire suppressant uh, system that we said there were some issues and some leaks and the pipes need to be checked. So I finally got a quote on that. They have to um, test the pipes within the building. Um, so that will be our next project. This is just a routine thing every three years? Five no, years this or? is because they found a leak. Now they have to check all the pipes to make sure if there's any other leaks throughout the building. This was the chemical reaction in the spores and the galvanized pipes? The types of pipes that they used with the water over time has corroded in places. Remember the pipes are dry and there's pressurized air in the pipes and the pipes don't flood for the fire suppression system to activate until you need it. Then the pipes get water through them, right? So there were spores in this or some type of medical um, metal reaction, some kind of chemical reaction in there. And what is the quote to test the pipes? Oh, it was five thousand six thousand dollars. Five hundred. Was the whole thing replaced during the renovation, or it was this, like yes. the, old fire, the whole thing? No, this I fire system is all. I know the horses left the barn, but the people who put in these systems don't understand what type of pipes you need to not corrode with the stuff that goes through them. No, we have had numerous issues with the copper piping in the domestic hot water system here. The, the, the pipe that they put in, although it meets a code or meets a spec, it is not the pipes of yesteryear. And we've had numerous copper pipes right I remember, up. it was Lewis Pitt. And we, we had to, you know, we've had to replace a lot of copper. We've had to replace a lot of stuff, <coughs> piping systems in here. Uh, and the HVAC system, we, you know, we have to offload hundreds of gallons of coolant and fix the pipe and then pipe it back in again, so. Okay. Six grand, I don't like spending $6,000 to test fire suppression pipe, but it's something we have to have, right? We have to do it. Uh, it's the company that services our building. Yep, um, all right. It has to be done. Okay. Is that it on building? That's it. Okay. Traffic issues other than Five Mile River Road? Nope. Not wow, okay. Moving right along. Uh, new business. We have lots of requests for funds. Four additional plate carriers for the SRO, K9 traffic unit. Chief, can I just ask a quick question about traffic issues? I know it's not on the agenda, but would it be considered a traffic issue if we discuss the Darien Road Race? Or would that have to be a separate sure. item? Yeah, that's a traffic issue. They're just looking for the LTA approval. I don't know if that's something that... 
we had had a discussion a little bit earlier on this of the dairy on road race, if it was approved or not, did we not find any other minutes? I don't believe that ever made it on the agenda. That is a long standing yeah. road race with nothing new. The only the only change I have for this year is the second wave of the race is starting fifteen minutes on one side or the other. But no no pattern changes. We're gonna meet with them next week or the week after and we don't expect any changes. What is the date of that? The seventeenth of September. It's a Sunday. And that's also on our existing list of events that we permit. Well, I don't know if we can vote in a special meeting, but we can Give me the high sign and vote it at our next meeting before the 17th. Are we allowed? No, I was just curious. If it's got to be in discussion for the next meeting, then we should like, make a motion to amend the agenda if you want to. Well, there's some traffic issues. Traffic issues are not on the agenda. I don't see any. Okay. Well, I don't see any procedural issues. Well, I agree that we continue to approve all of the agenda items and we'll do that on the 17th. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank well, the commission can certainly say that the Duran Road Race will be approved unless there are significant changes. We can add that to our next agenda. Is everybody all right with that? Like yeah, with a standing. Yeah. Right. I, I would say, Chief, anything on that approved list, right? Unless there are any meaningful, significant changes to those things, we don't want to look. We can put that on the agenda for a regular meeting to make a formal. Do you, do you care? About that? No, I agree. I'll, I'll second your motion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, we're all good for the 17th, yep. and we will put it on the next agenda to review our approved list and give standing orders that those are fine. Okay. Unless you feel that we should either bring to our attention or the public's attention any change to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we can certainly discuss and we that can, next time. I, I think they do need to bring it forth to, to our folks every year. 100%. Absolutely. And only if there's a meaningful change. And we bring by the way, it, not that anyone watches us, but it is nice for the public as these things come up. Reminder: It's the Darien Road Race this weekend. You know, we can we can highlight yeah, them without having it on our agenda. And we'll also uh, put out a formal yes. advisory. You do. The week before. I do get those. Okay. So now we are requesting four additional plate carriers. Is that you? Uh, I think it's more Captain Mayor. I think you probably okay. talked to that. Um, I don't know that I was involved in the um, initial request for these additional four, but I can definitely see the purpose behind it. We're looking to add additional four or four additional fleet carriers for um, officers that are not necessarily part of the patrol division, but are in um, department vehicles. Uh, that would be the two SROs our existing canine unit and the traffic unit. Those officers are out and about at any particular time and could feasibly be one of the first people in a location where there was an active threat or an active shooter. No issue. The Kate, they're, they're not requesting one for the canine it was an oversight. Obviously that is a marked car. That is just a party initial request. But again, okay. something we need to have. Um, all right, I'm going to make a motion that we approve uh, the which is the bid at $2,906.28. Second. Any other questions? Agreed. All those in favor? Um, okay, request for funds $709.75 for 17 mounts for fleet carriers, which I assume we have to have. Well, what that, what this is going to do. Because of the public expectation and the way the state statute on, on body cameras is crafted, if you don't have the mount on the external plate carriers that we have, you will be putting the plate carrier over your body camera and then the expected footage in a critical incident will not be there. So you can't really expect the officer like this in a critical incident to undo his or her shirt, take the backer out, get this, put it on the plate carrier, put it on. So this is going to have it on there. Right away, you're just gonna unsnap it off this one, and you're gonna snap it on, you know, like snap it on the, the other one, and off you go. So it's something again that we yeah. have to have. Okay, um, I make a motion that we approve the seven hundred and ten dollars for the additional mounts. Sure. Any further question? All those in favor? And that project was funded from the alarm fund, so that that is an alarm fund yeah. expenditure request. 
Um, okay, request for funds number three, support for the slow down in town campaign. Brent? So, as everybody knows, I think it's our third year, it could be our fourth year with the Slow Down in Town campaign. We're doing this in partnership, of course, with the Board of Selectmen, the First Selectmen specifically, as well as with members of the RTM. So, for the printed materials, which are not covered in the Selectmen budget, I'd like to make a request from the False Alarm Fund upwards of up to $8,000. It would probably be a little bit less than that, but to be conserved up to $8,000. That's for a uh, one and a half month campaign that we'll be doing once again this year starting at the beginning of the school season, so in a couple of weeks, and carrying that through to October and to um, call it Halloween. So that would include, this again, this is just for the printed material portion, uh, lawn signs, about 140 lawn signs. We have banners, we have mailers that we're doing to the residents of the town of Darien, uh, card magnets to bring awareness, uh, social media, as well as t-shirts for the folks at uh, EMS. There's, how many members are there now, Kevin? 50 plus. 50 plus. Um, so good publicity for us, and I really, I think these t-shirts, when we provide it to them, they run around the high school and it brings a lot of awareness to the local youth in town. So um, it's been a very effective campaign. We've received extremely positive feedback from our residents, so we'll continue to do this. We're trying to make it bigger each year. So I'd like to make, make a motion request up to 8000 from the False Alarm Fund for these printed materials. Second. Sounds good. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Right. Chief, just, just really quick, I'm looking at this quote from Axon. It has 15 on the quantity. You want 17, correct? 17 on the on the request. Yeah. And the dollar amount is for 17. Whatever, I think, can we just make a motion to Fine. match the number of plate carriers you have up to $1,000? I'm not sure if that was a typo or well, the amount totally that we approved was 709. So I assume that somebody went did up to 17 that. and went from 626 to, to sure 709. That, that you're, okay, and that's that's how many plate carriers we have? 17. I believe we have 16, but we wanted one as a spare. Great. Perfect. And that includes the, the four new ones: the two right. SROs, the canine, and the. Yeah, charge. we had 12 original, and we just got four more. Great. Um, okay, geocaching project for this bracelet. I am analog in the digital world, so I will let one of the captains address this one. I'll start and Captain Mary can jump in because he might understand a little better. Um, one of our officers um, is doing geocaching with her son where uh, there's an app and they it's kind of like a scavenger hunt. Um, and you find these little treasures around town, and in these little boxes, there's trinkets, or for us, um, this officer wanted to do bracelets, it's a Darien police on it. So essentially, you hide this little box somewhere on the property, and in the app, you have to go and find it, and then you open up you know, the box, you, you find it hidden somewhere, you open up the box, you write your name or something that you've been there, and then you take one of the trinkets. So we just thought it would be another. Um, Are there key. other place locations oh, yeah, in Darien? Yes. All of the country. Well, all well, of the country, but in uh, Darien, yes. Darien yes. Yes. are people yes. hunting things in Darien? Yes. Woods. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Woods. Do we have a place where we would be comfortable with people crawling all over? Yes. Yeah, so we would do it in a <laughs> safe location. Okay. You don't have to say where. It's a jeep out front with no doors you can put it <laughs> yeah. into. Some oh, unlocked wow. car, oh, unsuspecting right. person has no, no keys in car. Yeah. 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 No, so, so, you guys aren't um, have any knowledge of this. It's it's real fun for the kids. It is it's like a real no, life treasure hunt. Totally. You file the app. You use a compass to try and locate this hidden thing. Once you do it, you check that box. You go to the next one and teach the kids about outdoors and stuff. Like that. <laughs> How much I didn't see it. So yeah. So the you know we just got one quote for. Um, bracelets. I don't know if we're actually going to go with bracelets, depending on the size of the the geocaching box that we get. But um, we have funds for you know items that we purchase for this type of thing. Yes. So so that won't be an issue. But the the cost for a thousand of the bracelets was two hundred ninety dollars, 
and then the Pelican case is about $38. So can we approve up to $350 for boxes and trinkets? And, and yeah, do you want, you, want, you want any more for when you do coffee with a cop? I know a lot of kids well, so we, that. Yeah, we, that cover we that have, too? Yes, we have okay. funds to cover that as well. Okay. So this did is they, just a Did they find that because there's a transmitter in that box? Yes. So the no, it's just pinned. It's pinned in a, in in a geolocation in the app. Oh, okay. So there's no like radio oh, thing going on where they have to check. You, okay. you use something called a, it's called a uh, cell phone. It's a <laughs> cell phone. <laughs> but also, I mean, also, if we purchase a thousand of the bracelets, we're not going to use them just for this. Yeah. Of course. Like, we'll yeah. have them for events as well. Well, I say we, I don't it was 290 plus something else. So we have $350 approved to buy yes, that's more something mm -hmm. to stick in the box and use the extras. I make a motion we approve up to $350 from the alarm fund to fund the location Second. of the box. All right, all those in favor? Okay, that comes to the end of our agenda, except for next meeting. Um, we are today on the 24th. Two weeks is the 7th. That would be a normal That would be a normal meeting, meeting or the 21st. Anyone? I'm sorry, what is the date? 7th or the 21st? 7th uh, works. The 21st, uh, I will I will be September 21st. I will be in London. I will be in Dallas. So, so the 7th is the winner. Yep. I'm not sure we can have anything we do, to discuss. Is you? there poss is it any possibility we can do 430 on the 7th? Sure can. Okay. Rick, is that all right? Does that change it to a special meeting? I don't There's already a special meeting. No, no that's, it's that's a regular, regular meeting. Thing. But I don't think the it time doesn't matter. Time 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 doesn't. If you change the time of what's posted, if it's already posted. But do we care whether it's a special meeting or a regular meeting? Not, I don't think we do. do. It's posted on websites. If, it, yeah, if it's posted at 4 o'clock, if you change the time, it has to be a special meeting. All right. Well, I'm going to. No problem. 4 30, I think, is if perfectly we, if, acceptable. If, if, I'm, no, I have a meeting from P3 and 4.30, but That's if we can start it, if we start at 4, it's not. Uh, I'm going to start it at 4.30. 30. Thank okay. you. I go on record to say this commission is, is very, very circumspect on following FOI rules and making sure that we're doing things properly. And I, and I have even gotten, you know, kudos from the public that this commission uh, okay. operates properly. Um, all right. We are adjourned. Oh, okay. Oh, okay.